Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying with Jim Mashura. I'm going to continue on with Charlie Mech's patterns that are in his book, Pennsylvania Trout Streams and Their Hatches. And it is a good idea to follow along. If you fish Pennsylvania, it's going to be a good idea to follow along with these flies because these, these flies in this book are going to coincide with the hatches in Pennsylvania. But this is going to be the Blue Dunn or Little Blueing Olive. The hook that I have in the vise is an 18. You can tie them 18, 20, and even smaller. But the, different, the only difference in this fly between the Blue Dunn and the Little Blueing Olive will be the color of the dubbing. I'm going to use gray thread. And we're going to put a base of thread down and we're going to put the tail on first because this is so small it's harder to put the tail on when you have your wings already on so for the tail I'm going to go ahead and use a dark uh, dark gray hackle fibers and we're going to stand them up and we're going to grab that pinch all together and when you pull them off like that, the tips will be lined up. And we want to keep this this uh, tail. We're going to go about the length of the hook shank. Make sure that it's on top. I'm going to go ahead, and you can see it pointing down there a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put a wrap underneath the tail. And we'll get that to come right up into position and we can bring our thread up for the wings and I'll remove that excess there now for the wings you can if you tie these in bigger sizes the blue gun itself you can tie that up to a size 12 and for those bigger sizes, you can use uh, the gray hackle tips, which would be, you know, the tips of the hackle there. But on these smaller sizes, you should use a dark gray mallard or a dark goose quill. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my goose quill, I'm going to touch the shank, poke it through. That was a little bit too big. There we go, that's better. We're going to pull that through, and there's the size of our wing right there. And you want to use a left, a wing, a feather from the left wing and a feather from the right wing. Whenever you buy mallard quills or goose quills, always make sure that you buy two and you get a left and a right. Again, we're going to poke that through. And take that. There we go. Now I'm going to pair them up. And we're going to put them basically with the concave sides together so that they are naturally split. And there we have them right there. And this wing is going to be about the length of the hook shank. We're going to give it that loose loop, pull it straight up. Straight up. We're about one quarter of the way back from the eye of the hook where we place the wing. If you watch my videos, I always start with the wing and I go halfway back and then bring it halfway of that that would make one quarter now I'm going to come here and I'm going to put the dubbing on and I'm going to turn this over so I could get my fingers in there better and for the dubbing he would use gray muskrat or medium gray poly so I'm going to use super fine and I'm going to use the Adams gray super fine and this is this is very small so you don't need much we're just gonna kind of 
change the color and thickness of the thread. We're going to go ahead and wrap this. Now when I reach the wing, I'm going to lift that wing up and wrap right in front of it. I'm holding that wing pretty tight. You don't want to get rough with that wing because you'll pop them apart. You can see there's one little piece there. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and put the hackle on. And I have a dark gray or a dark dun hackle here. I'm going to put this right between the wings and I'm going to leave one or two of those crew cup barbels exposed. And I'm going to pin this down pretty tight right there. Lift the wing and I'm going to get it in front. There we go. Trim off that excess. Now we could go ahead and wrap that wing, or that hackle, put my delicate hackle pliers on there. If I can get them on there, there we go. And now that first wrap doesn't have the hackle shooting out towards the rear. And came off my pliers. And we're going to go ahead and give it a couple of wraps in back. Oop, let's split that one. And then we're going to hold the wing back and we're going to rub the wing. And two wraps, looks like it's plenty on this. And I'm going to hold that feather at, at 90 degree from the hook shank. And in doing this, when you you want to take your thread and go right on top of the previous wrap, then you can pull your feather back and put a couple of wraps right in front of it, and this is going to pinch it in. Now I can take my poke and snip cuticle trimmer, trim that excess off. Now I can still I still see there's uh, two or two or three hackle barbels going to the front. I'm gonna take my half hitch tool. And I'm just gonna give it a double half hitch to push those hackle barbels back. Yep, and one of them didn't get. You can see there one of them. Uh, cut you out of the way then. There it is. Now I can just use my half inch tool to finish it or you can go ahead and take your whip finish because it's pretty open. Once, twice, three times. Yeah, we'll trim that. Poke and snip. And here we have the little blue dun, or if you use olive dubbing, you have a little blue winged olive. So the next uh, video will be the rusty spinner, which would be the spinner for this, and then the nymph for this. So I hope that you learned something from this video. Hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. If you, you or your friends subscribe, please hit the notify button so you don't miss any of my videos. Leave, uh, please visit my sponsors. Leave comments, questions, suggestions. If you'd like to purchase any flies for me, go to etsy.com slash shop slash the flyman gym. And if you don't see it there, just send me a message and I'll get right back to you. 
and most of all thank you very much for watching my videos